Thank you. Um, well, good evening. My name is Jake Day, Mayor of Salisbury. Um, we are here tonight. Uh, first of all, thank you all for braving the snow. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We're here to unveil um, our branding. And uh, as you all know, because most of you, if you're in this room, participated in uh, the process with Ben Muldrow, our expert, and a Delmarva resident. Um, ben and his firm, Arnett and Muldrow, have um, done an incredible job. And they've been here, uh, they, they spent uh, two and a half days here, I guess it was, or two days, uh, meeting with the community, uh, meeting with all of you to talk about um, our branding, our community branding and our downtown branding. And that was, that's the other thing. We wanted to pursue two brands, two distinct brands. And uh, one of them was uh, something for our downtown to help define and uh, craft uh, the image of our downtown. And that's something that Jamie Heener has been asking for for ages. And, uh, and we also wanted to do community-wide branding. You know, what is Salisbury? Community image. Uh, and so what we've tried to do is acknowledge that the, um, uh, the, the new color that's going to be driving everything is, is a, a pure white. So we had it snow. Um, and so the, the stage is set all around. And um, thank you for pulling that off. Hey, it's hey, incredible. Foot is steel. The second visit, second snowfall. I, I don't know what that's about. We roll out the white carpet for it. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> With that, Ben, awesome. take it away. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you all for coming out. I want to echo Mayor Day's... Um, Welcome. I, I like I said, it, it's I've had this interesting sequence lately. I've had two meetings in a row up in Milford, where the council chambers were filled with police officers, and then as soon as I got up, they all left. I don't know what that's all about. And then second time in a row that I've been down here in Salisbury and it snows. So um, I, I hope. I hope that doesn't set some sort of strange omen for whatever the third plague is going to be. But uh, police officers, snow. So maybe the locusts are next. Um, I'll do my best to keep this meeting tonight pretty brief. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff I want to show you, though, some pretty exciting stuff. And had an opportunity to present this to our steering committee at the conclusion of the last visit and um, got some refinement had some additional work that I've done over that time. And um, the nice thing is that steering committee will be seeing stuff today that they have no clue what's going to be up there. So be a little bit of excitement for everybody involved. So I'm going to jump right in. The first thing that I think is, is very, very important is to recap some of the things that I heard. This community is truly hungry for connectivity because people are aware that there is a lot of really good things going on and they're sick and tired of other people not being aware of the really good things going on. So those that are involved are truly yearning for some sort of platform that helps to create a sense of overarching momentum instead of just having the individual successes exist in their own vacuum and their own ecosystem. So, as we went through this process and tried to create a system, we tried to create a system that would be very easy to use, very easy to deploy, very logical to expand, and something that was simple enough that people really found a place that they could connect themselves. So whether you're planning an event in downtown or whether you're a university bringing students from all over the world, there's a simplicity of message that allows people to connect those dots. The other thing that I think is fair to say about Salisbury is talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, you know, you're 20 minutes from the beach, you're 20 minutes from the bay, depending on how fast you drive. Um, you're right next to Ocean City. It's, it's interesting what I heard you all say about Ocean City. It's, it's like Ocean City is its own ecosystem. It's not really Eastern Shore, it's Ocean City. Like it truly is its own thing. Um, there was this connection to Delmarva as an identity. There was this connection to the Eastern Shore. But at the same time, uh, I think one of the things that's fair to say is, as I asked the questions, I felt like the self-esteem wasn't quite as high as it could have been. And that's really normal. That's really normal. I think the thing that we need to remember is a community like this that has a, a historic downtown, that has 
typical issues with economic decline, transitional economies, you know, you sometimes having declining average household incomes and, and um, average salaries and, and some of those numbers. I mean, those are things that every community deals with in cycles. But you have to be reminded how much you have to offer from the outside. It's kind of like owning a classic car. I always tell people about the classic car illusion. I've got a 67 Mustang. I've had it. It was my first car. I got it when I was 14. And at this point, I've probably spent close to $200,000 on a $10,000 car um, because it takes constant work, takes constant up. Now, why in the world would you do that? You do it because you have passion. And where does the passion come from? Well, the passion really comes from the appreciation of others. That's why I take that thing to cruise in. I need other people to tell me how beautiful that car is so that I'll keep doing the work on it. Your community is the exact same way. You need to be able to have those lines of communication so you can hear the positive feedback from outside. So the motivation to continue taking care of yourself is there. It's a very, very important part of that cycle. So hopefully what you're going to see tonight is a platform that helps to reinforce and re-engage the citizens that are essential in, in driving the community forward. Now, from a brand system, one of the things that I really always try to focus in on is creating a set of components that we can use as a foundation to connect the dots. The first thing that I like to look at is colors. And um, so with the brand elements, we'll be looking at the colors. Now, I always give a disclaimer before I put my colors up because this is a, on a projected screen, so the colors might not actually look anything like they appear on screen. So. If I put up a green and it looks like it's, you know, a horrible color green, don't, don't overreact too much. Um, but I will kind of show you where, where we're going with this. What I've done is I've selected five different colors. Selected a blue, kind of a gold, a green, a warm gray, and a red. A lot of these colors are derived from some of the identities that have existed. Some of them are slight derivations of that. Because honestly, some of the colors that had been picked before weren't the best, uh, didn't go with one another, couldn't coexist next to each other. So trying to create something that created a little bit of energy. But with these five colors, we really create a base platform for us to work off of. And as you can kind of see up here, we've got the current city seal up top. We've got Wicomico County seal. We've got this Salisbury University seal, which is a lot going and then the Salisbury University logo um, so that really created that foundation and then the second thing that we did was we selected typeface and we wanted to select a uniform typeface that could be used at, as a connecting tool so we landed on two a primary and a secondary the primary is a very traditional serif but it, it does have some elements that are a little more contemporary it's got some nice curves to it and and everything and, and believe it or not when you pick this you do actually think about what your name is um, nobody's ever let me change their name so um, Salisbury is what we're dealing with that means you start with an S some typefaces have beautiful S's some typefaces have horrible S's um, but one of the things that's very important when you make these selections is don't pick a typeface that only works for your name because you need that for expandability a lot of times people will go in and the first thing they'll say is, well, I think my community is beautiful, so I'm going to pick a script. And then it might look good in Salisbury and you can't use it for anything else. So now there's no connectivity options there. The other thing is, just because your community is old doesn't mean you have to use papyrus. Um, you're not trying to capture the entire personality of your community in a typeface. You're trying to have a connective tool. The second one is a sans serif. It's a more contemporary typeface. It's going to be something that actually rises to the top a little more with downtown. So we can have something that's a little cleaner, more contemporary, but the two play very nicely together. So we've looked at colors. We yes. Are these open source, Tom? They are. Yeah. They are, and they were they were um, well actually one I think I purchased and I purchased with a multi seat license. For the community, not off the top of my head. And we'll make it available to everyone. Yeah, yeah, we'll make sure that the one that does have a license we can share. Um, I know that the second one is open, 
and it's called Montserrat, but I can't remember the first one. Okay, so we've got, we've got colors, we've got typeface. Then the next thing that we really focus in on is, is the message. And for that, we write something called a brand statement. And I want to read that for you now. We are Salisbury, Maryland, and our town was born from the headwaters of the Wicomico River. This special place, nestled squarely between the beaches and the bay, has been attracting people to its stunning location for almost 300 years. Now, one of the largest cities on the peninsula, Salisbury serves as the capital of the Eastern Shore, combining vibrant economic opportunity, quality public education, world-class healthcare, reinvigorated environmental stewardship, globally known corporations, and an energetic and inspiring team of community leaders to chart its own course and craft a sound plan for its future. We're Salisbury and we're a college town. As the home of Salisbury University, we welcome students around the globe to come for a top-notch education. Around every corner, you can meet a former SU student who has fallen in love with our town and decided to stay and make it their home. We are Salisbury and we're a cultural town. From the art galleries and studios of our community's artists to the celebration of the arts each month at Third Fridays. From the flavors and traditions of our many cultures to the airways of Delmarva Public Radio, Salisbury is bringing the community together and celebrating the best of what makes us different. We are Salisbury and we are a river town. The Wicomico River starts here. Water runs through our downtown and our city park. Bridges crisscross the water, standing as a physical reminder of the importance of connections. The active port and marina districts remind us that the water continues to work for us and the new Riverwalk reinforces that it also is ours to enjoy. We are Salisbury, Maryland. We invite you to discover our ever-changing downtown, explore our zoo, parks, and trails, and connect with this special place we call home. We're working hard every day because our friends and neighbors deserve it and because our community is worth it. We invite you to be our guest Experience the warmth of the heart and soul of Delmarva and discover what we, we mean when we say Salisbury, the comfortable side of coastal. So that concept, this comfortable side of coastal, is this very interesting position statement. And I have to tell you, as I went through and I was trying to figure out what direction I should go. I kept coming back to this concept of coastal and the positive overarching values that it brings to the table. And I realized that you are a coastal community and you don't realize it, but you do realize it. You look in your seal and you have a sailboat. You look to your university and the mascot's the seagull. You look to the Wicomico County Visitor Center, and it's a lighthouse. There's coastal imagery all around you. There's coastal imagery in all of the messages that you have shared, but there's never been that declaration of the quality of life. You've got a river in, in the heart of your community, and you have easy, easy access to both the beach and the bay. Now, as you take that, that's that base foundation. And follow along with me because I've got, I've got more, more components there. But this brand statement really is this opportunity for us to take the things that we heard in those input sessions and tie it together into a singular statement. Now, from that, we move on to the, the logo itself. Seeing the colors, seeing the typeface, we've seen the tagline. How do we bring that together into an overall logo? And the thing that I really wanted it to be, I wanted it to be crisp and clean. I wanted it to be light and airy. I wanted you to look at it and, and it feel coastal, but it also feel like it played and connected with your agrarian culture, which is still so important. But I, I just wanted it to have a flow to it, a movement. So this is what we landed on. 
again, very clean and simple. You see underneath it, thank God for the Y in Salisbury so we can have a space to put a tagline. <laughs> Got our seagulls in the logo. Now, one of the things that we talked about as a steering committee was it, it is a similar typeface to that of Salisbury University. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, they're not the same. So the two can sit right next to each other and not look like they're using the same typeface but they are obviously from the same family, which I think is extremely appropriate for a community that you said to us, right now we're a town with a college, but we aspire to be a college town. And I think that, I hope that you heard that in that brand statement. There were quite a few things that were aspirational. There were things that are goals, goals that we want to achieve increased and enhanced connectivity but things that we can actually comfortably, comfortably proclaim now and fake it till we make it. That's always a, it's always a valid strategy. So from this, I wanna, I wanna jump forward because it kind of gets fun when the, the system starts to get moving. So this is what we're referring to as the destination brand. Now, this destination brand with this tagline, Comfortable Side of Coastal, actually has three components to it that allow us to have three different positioning statements. The first, Maryland's coastal college town. We want to proclaim Salisbury's role in a state level prominence and be able to use your institution of higher education to create a true competitive advantage for the role that the college plays in your community. The second, capital of the Eastern Shore. This is really a partnership and a teamwork position statement as it relates to working together to create a greater sense of value in an economic development realm for the Eastern Shore. This is multi, multiple communities, multiple municipalities, and multiple states. And then the third, the heart and soul of Delmarva, this is yet again another opportunity for you to create a greater sense of regional relevance and connectivity. So these three different position statements give everybody an opportunity to reach out and connect in different ways. Now from that, as you start to look at the system, one of the things that we really wanted to do, we wanted to wrap our arms around the SBY acronym. It was something that we saw used over and over again. So we did a stylized version combined with the icon. We tested the logo out in one color in reverse. Um, because of that lovely Y that we have there, we can switch out our tagline with a, a state modifier. We can also connect with the county. The partnerships and relationships between the community and the county are as good as they've ever been and they're getting better every day. Partnerships and working together is extremely important. And one of the things that we know to be the case is in the economic development arena, being able to show a true partnership between the city and county level puts you on a platform that makes a very desirable place to do business. And if we're all being completely honest, we heard it loud and clear from support sometimes. So we have to make sure that you are best positioned to support yourself. So being able to show those partnerships, I think, does a lot for us. Again, the, the different color variations. Now, from that, we want to take what we're looking at with the destination brand, and then we start talking a little bit about the city seal. And fun little exercise. So here's what I want to put in my logo. <laughs> Tomatoes, pumpkins, a haystack, cucumbers, apples, strawberries, beans, sailboat, pine tree, college building, tree lined road, and a building life street. Okay, if that is my challenge, if that is what needs to be in my logo, I have truly found the perfect solution. <laughs> so obviously this is the seal as it stands. Um, what I really wanted to do for the community, it's funny, it's like I can see some of you going, I didn't, I didn't realize all that stuff was in there. Um, what I really wanted to do, th this seal does have a lot of history to it. Now, I will tell you all, since you braved the weather, during this process, this little square right here that's supposed to be um, downtown building, I believe, like a building line street. Um, I nicknamed it the Death Star Trench. Um, so you all can take that home with you as a little gift. But 
What I wanted to do was I wanted to give this seal a very, very slight update with a main focus on the typeface in the outer ring and then the treatments of the outer bands themselves with very little focus on the graphic of the shield at the center. Because there was a tremendous amount of thought in here of what wanted to go in and, and you know, there's no reason to, to dig too deep in that. So what I did was I simply created a slight variation, created a slightly more ornate um, seal itself, created a one color version, which I'm not sure if it existed before, um, but this actually works pretty well. Um, you know, somebody saw this and said, oh, that kind of looks like a rope around it. That kind of feels coastal. Wow, that was an accident that happened <laughs> by accident, right? No, like, um, but what's kind of cool about this is now, all of a sudden, I always try to teach a little lesson about these seals. Seals are not supposed to be used to market your community. They're the, the representation of the formal actions of the government. And one of the things I always like to talk about is if you look at the overall compositional height of this seal, and then you compare how tall Salisbury is to this whole height, it's like standing really tall and whispering, you know, that you cannot use this tool all by itself to effectively convey who you are. So being able to take this graphic, tie it with a word type that uses that same typeface and being able to create something that does kind of represent the city and the formal element of the city. And once you do that, you have every right in the world to be able to pull just the shield out and use that as well. So, not going to spend a ton of time on that, but just being able to show how that does connect. Now, in addition, some of the collateral pieces. I'm always a big fan of having this stuff make its way onto things. It's like, okay, so it's a new logo. Well, what do you do with it? So, I like to go shopping. So, um, you know, one of the things that I always tell people is like, I spend a lot of time talking about retail leakage, talking about how we can't buy everything we want in our market, we have to leave the market to go shopping. Well, if people are gonna leave the market, at least send them with shopping bags. So when they're getting, putting their dollars somewhere else. But the nice thing is you are a retail attractor. Being able to create something that reinforces that brand is, is kind of a cool opportunity. Um, being able to have logo merchandise that people can buy. You know, it's super easy to go out. I could buy Salisbury University stuff all day long here in town, I'm sure. I can go out and I can probably buy a shirt or a hat for the local high schools. But how easy is it to find merchandise to show your pride in where you live? So being able to give this, and, and one of the things that I will say, to me, this is one of the really great ways that a brand can make its way into the private sector and the private sector can benefit from it. If you own a coffee shop and want to make cappuccino mugs, take it and run with it. You own a downtown retail and you want to make shirts, go for it. You want to make hats, get them embroidered. You know what I mean? And one of the cool things that you can start to do is start to have that confidence to be able to have something that just is nice and clean. And, you know, you don't actually have to slap Salisbury across everything. Being able to evolve into that, um, that icon status really does mean a lot. City vehicles. You know, city vehicles, I think one of the things that we have to remember is those city vehicles are visual signs of the services being provided to the citizen. And believe it or not, I know that everybody wants to be very, very responsible with taxpayer dollars, but graphics like this are not actually that expensive. And they can help to increase safety and awareness of what's going on. But believe it or not, you don't have to make it day, day glow orange to make it noticed. So being able to go out and, and kind of connect those dots does a lot for us. Now, something else that I thought was kind of cool was this idea of a city flag. And currently, I don't know if anybody has heard, there was a TED talk that was done uh, by a guy named uh, Roman Mars, I think, did it on, on city flags. And he talked about the whole process of designing flags. He said that a, a flag should be able to, after it's looked at for 30 seconds by a five-year-old, they should be able to turn around and draw the flag. That's the level of simplicity. 
that a flag should have. He also has a term that I have adopted and love for the communities that simply take their city seal and put it on a blank field of color. They're called um, SOBs, seals on bed sheets. So he really speaks against that, that seals on bed sheets. So what I did was I started to do some research and I found the crest for the city of Salisbury in England. And Inside that crest, this is a, it's not a canton, it's a whatever, it's a, is, is their, um, their heraldry, and it's just this blue and yellow bar. And there's something that's really confident about this. It's kind of cool that obviously people know your name comes from somewhere, and being able to kind of connect back to that and, and give an opportunity to show some civic pride through a city, city flag that is more than just that, that seal on a bed sheet. Now from that, yes. When you notice the seal, you have that, we call it Darth Vader, that Death Star slash. Mm. Why don't you put that skyline in there instead of that one that looks like New York City that doesn't look anything like Salt Yeah, and again, the, the big thing that I was doing with the seal was simply showing an adaptation. If, if seals can be very, uh, very tenuous because sometimes if you do too much to it, it actually affects your charter because a community's charter sometimes is connected to its seal, dates back early on. So th absolutely, there are, there's room for improvement and I think that that dialogue is going on. But uh, right. yeah, that looks like Salisbury. Exactly. I mean, that looks like anything here. Right. Right. You know, straight, same height. Exactly. Exactly. So we've seen the destination brand. We've seen how elements can can link over to the city brand. We've seen how it can make its way into collateral. But then we start to look at the brand extension. That's where we start to take this and and make its way into other entities in the community. Now, my little disclaimer: I talk to absolutely no one from the airport. Okay. <laughs> So this, was, this is in no way sanctioned by the airport, nor was it requested by the airport. But that being said, the airport is a huge amenity for this community. And there are many, many people in this region that have a relationship with Salisbury because Salisbury offers them a comfortable alternative to going to BWI or going to Phillips. So... You know, seeing an adaptation on the tagline, using the same colors, using the same typeface, you can start to see that brand extension. Being able to take the overall brand element and integrating it into initiatives, making the community more bike friendly. And then even taking that example and being able to roll it over into a, a marketable, I'm, I'm delaying since she's taking a, a picture, I don't wanna advance too quick. Um, being able to create a truly marketable hiker biker trail. And, and I want to be very deliberate about this. Everybody in the country has decided that rail trails and bike trails are like the key to economic vitality, which biking is great, but you cannot go to the effort of creating this fantastic bike trail and then call it the Salisbury Memorial bike trail. Branding is important to that asset working for your community. So, you know, being able to create something that people want to say that they're doing, something that has built-in intrigue. Um, back home in South Carolina, we had a, a community that I worked with called Traveler's Rest, and they created this, this rail trail. And it was, was called the Swamp Rabbit because it was named after a textile spur line that used to run there. And the engine, they called the engine the Swamp Rabbit. Well, the Swamp Rabbit has grown so much that they just renamed the, the Greenville, South Carolina professional hockey team the Greenville Swamp Rabbit after this bike trail. If you look to Damascus, Virginia, where the Virginia Creeper Trail is, this trail has provided huge regional economic stimulation because people sound cool when they say, I'm going to ride the creeper. So thinking about a brand 
it truly does make sense. I know, creeper. Uh, you know, I'm going to be a creeper this weekend. Um, but hey, it's worked for them, right? So then we get to downtown. Now, because we did something that was clean and was, was kind of on the spectrum, was very traditional for the overall community brand, we felt like that opened us up to be a little bit more contemporary and a little cooler on the downtown brand. And if I'm being completely honest, what you need is you need a brand that's going to disrupt a little. It's going to make people realize that now all of a sudden downtown Salisbury looks different visually than my mind perceives it to be. So had I gone overly historic and ye olde, then people would have seen it and been like, yeah, they're going to just keep trying doing the same thing they've been doing all along. So I wanted to do something that was a little, a little fresher. Um, I started out by looking at the downtown itself. You've got these headwaters, these two sets of headwaters that kind of converge and head out. You've got a true downtown on the river, which strangely enough, a lot of people don't realize for some reason. And I think that you have another dynamic that it is, since I am here on a branding task, I think it is important for me to acknowledge. And even Google Maps agrees with me. This is a road. This is not a road. The past efforts to turn Main Street into the plaza, be it like it, not like it, be it think it was great, think it wasn't great, I put all that to the side. From a branding perspective, you have downtown and you got the plaza. The plaza has become a giant identity. It has become a place, a very, very small place, a very, very limited place. And again, if I'm being, I'm being completely blind, I think, I think new, new things were one of the things, one of the things that, that we have to do is, is we have to start chipping away, away at, at that, that idea of the plaza and, 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 and expanding that back out. So, so, so we, we create, create a true, 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 true right, 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 district. And the more the more the more the more the So so what I did when I did started this, 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 then it kind of came in with me to the this, 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 this icon of motion, motion, movement, and, and this simple, simple statement is happening. Not in action, and certainly not in regard. It's a statement that has two meanings at the same time. We're creating activity and action, but we also know we've got a lot of work to do. And it's happening. Not just the acknowledgement we've got work to do, but we're working on it. So when you put these two side by side, you have the opportunity to cultivate a sense of cool and comfortable as a community. Being able to kind of play around with this a little and see how it, it grows and expands, different, different build-ups work. Um, everybody loves it when you can take an icon and replace a letter with it. So get clever with that. Uh, luckily, you've got two <coughs> O's in downtown, so you put it wherever you want, you know? Um, but then starting to, to really connect with this idea of all the different things that are happening downtown and the different opportunities and experiences that you're starting to offer. Being able to create collateral materials that, that generates a, a sense of buzz there is actually a lot to talk about with what's going on. With this icon system, you've got this interesting mixture of, of kind of round and this grid and gives you this opportunity to simply use very simple geometry as a connecting tool with circles and things like that. Being able to take that fundamental element 
and again continue to expand it out, the marina district right now, the marina feels like a different thing. You have to cross a bridge. It's got big stuff there. It's got boats you build. And it's got, you know, it, it's, it has not achieved that destination status. Now, I want to be very, very deliberate about this. Marina District is part of downtown. Marina District is a subset of downtown. It's not a separate place. It's an additional place in downtown. But being able to create an icon that can really be theirs, that you can start to use to enhance and fuel people's sense of connectivity, and be able to generate some excitement with some of the projects that are going on there is extremely important. Again, being able to create really cool collateral materials for downtown, it's a different style. You can see traditional with one thing and a little bit more action oriented with the other. Taking advantage and changing mindsets with signage. Um, I came up with this sign Oh God, like 15 years ago. And I've started to see people use this all over the country, which is kind of cool. And, but this whole idea, like there is nothing worse for a downtown district than for sale signs and for, for rent signs everywhere. Being able to get in there, make sure that it, when you do have a vacancy, have a vacancy treatment so that you, you say, guess what? There's a new opportunity to make downtown great. Uh, being able to connect the dots with all the spaces that might not actually be perceived as being downtown is that you can do that with these available property signs. Being able to have kind of a digital presence that can make its way out. Um, I'm not convinced that mobile apps are the right thing to do. I want to be very clear about that. I just wanted to put your logo on a cell phone, really. Um, people are obviously using their phones. And they're obviously using their phones to orient themselves and to experience places. I'm not convinced that spending the money and then trying to figure out how to have the money to then market the app that you have created is the right solution. But you better make sure that the information that is, is attainable is right. And you better make sure that the businesses that exist in your district are using that technology to their utmost and make sure that when you do have a website that it looks right on a, on a mobile phone. Just doing simple, cool collateral materials, give you giveaways, you know, getting people excited. And, and again, I think that there is something extremely confident when you have a system that you're comfortable not putting your name on. And I want you all to get there as a community. You deserve that confidence. And I want you to be able to get there. And then finally, making its way all the way out into banner systems. Um, banners are extremely important tools. They, I think a lot of people think that they're just pretty. So they're like, oh, that's a pretty banner. Well, no, they're a lot more than that. And one of the things that I think is really important, and I want to talk you through this a little, obviously we have two different design themes going here. The left-hand side is the greater community. The right-hand side is more downtown. Downtown is brighter, more vibrant, I'm showing four color banners here, where on the other side I'm showing canvas, two color screen printed banners. And the thing that's interesting about these one of the things that we know we need to help people do is enter into our community. Our entry corridors are not necessarily the most beautiful entry corridors in America. Now, believe it or not, you can do a lot of things. You can bury utilities. You can drop in planted medians. You can put in street trees and period lighting. You can create a physical place that is inviting in those connecting corridors. But the absolute cheapest way to create a sense of continuity in a corridor is with the introduction of banners because it allows you to set a rhythm. Now, guess what? If that's my strategic goal, I do not want a different color banner on every single pole. 
I want to pick a corridor and I want to go solid color. Or I want to go all one on one side and all the other on the other. So if I'm in my car, that those banners are carrying me through until I reach the destination and it changes over. Does that make sense? These, these can go a long way. We can have a system just like this and when we get over towards campus, guess what? The exact same design and it can convert to campus colors. And therefore you can roll that in. So these are really important tools that you can use and then guess what? We can have a zoo banner. Where should we put the zoo banner? not at the zoo. You put the zoo banner where somebody else might go and get out of their car so they become aware there's a zoo here. It's all about using this to extend the stay and extend the interaction. And then with your downtown banners, you can use a different system to do downtown banners. And eventually a lot of the downtowns like to use banners as event notification tools. Now, you got to have people down there before they're going to notify anybody. So if nobody sees the banner, it's not a real effective tool. But being able to create a sense of cool and confidence is really, really important. Now, I'm showing these as an intended double banner set. They don't have to be that way, especially on your narrow street. You could have this on one side of the street and that on the other. Just have them again. That continuity, though, is really important. You can imagine how these banners could be used in tools as tools to help people expand their perception of what downtown is. If I am walking on the plaza, the existence of banners might make me far more comfortable to carry down a side street and extend where I'm willing to walk. So these are really, really strategic tools that I think are important to have in play in the community. So with that, I always try my best to, to keep my, my part to about 45 minutes and I've been talking for 44 minutes. So um, with that, I'd like to open it up for your thoughts. Most of you, I see, see a lot of familiar faces. You played the role in providing us feedback, providing us answers, providing us guidance. And now this is my opportunity to share back with you the, the platform and the strategy and what we're thinking. Um, I, I will say, I, I do this a lot. And when you sit in one of these presentations as a resident of a community and you have somebody that doesn't live there stand in front of you and put all these images of a place and it's like, this is my home and I've never seen this before. This feels uncomfortable. But part of the reason we do the system the way we do and we do all the different elements is so you can start to see how it would work, how it would roll out, how it would expand. And hopefully by the conclusion of that, you start to get some comfort with something that was very kind of unsettling at first because you've never seen it before. But with that, I'd love to open it up for you all. Jamie, can I put you on the spot? Because I know you've been waiting. Yeah, no, I'm just, this is just a little comment. One thing that I noticed was missing on your banners, which I'm a big fan of, um, is a sponsor logo. How do you feel about that? Do okay. You actually feel the same way I do? So fantastic, um, fantastic question about sponsors. Now, first of all, the moment that you put a sponsor on a banner, some state department of uh, transportation consider them billboards. And therefore on state highways are restricted. So we've actually had communities that have invested money in banners, gotten sponsors to pay for them, and then they go up and they can't use them. They have to pull them back down. The second thing, and I'm not going to put down the hard and fast, don't ever have a sponsor. But the thing that I will say is, if you're going to have a sponsor, please, for the love of God, put the sponsor in the right place. When you look at these banners, these banners are being viewed by people in cars and people walking on the sidewalk. They're viewed from the bottom up. They're not read like a traditional book. You don't start up there. When you're driving, you actually see this, and then road, this, then road, this, and then road. So if you're going to put a sponsor on a banner, you put it at the top, the very, very top. And then you always put your repetitive reinforcing community identity at the bottom. It's counterintuitive to the way that they would normally be designed. The great thing is when you're talking to the sponsor, you sit there and you say, we're putting you in a spot of prominence. We're going to put your name at the top of the banner. But from a strategic standpoint, 
it minimizes the difference. It minimizes all the, the clutter that can be caused from a different thing, a different company logo on every single banner. So if they're going to be included, they need to be at the top. Certainly. Um, and thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Is there anything else that you could expand on about how the use of sponsors and the business community and, you know, other, other people who could leverage this concept a without absolutely. necessarily having the city put the bill? Absolutely. Okay, so sponsors. You, you got sponsors and you got donators. When you offer an opportunity for a sponsorship, it is an exchange of funds for benefits. I will sponsor this and in exchange, I will get a benefit. It is a customer provider relationship. It's different from saying, will you give me a thousand dollars? Well, what will you do? I will put your website on my, I mean, I'll put your website on my website. No, that's, so when you're talking about sponsorship, the thing that you have to do is you have to be able to give a competitive, some sort of exposure to them. And the more passive the exposure, the more engaged the exposure, the more it's worth. You want the folks that are asking for sponsorship to be able to walk into a room and with confidence say, if you give me money, I'm going to give you exposure that's going to lead to customers. And by, by creating a sense of buzz, by creating continuity in your communication, you can start to offer businesses the opportunity to sponsor a greater amount of things and, and possibly even minimize the number of asks. For an organization like a downtown group, the thing that I like to do is I like to say, get it down to one ask a year. What do you want them to do? How much do you want from them? And what are they gonna get out of it? Combine all the events that make sense for them, show that it was well thought out, it was well targeted to their audiences and that you feel like this sponsorship can provide them economic gain. So professional communication and continuity in your marketing help to earn some trust from that, that sponsorship side. What I keep hearing out of the, the nonprofit world is the days, the old school days of corporate sponsorship are gone. There is, there is a focus on ROI now. What am I going to get from my donation? And, and so the more professional you can look and the more all of your efforts seem tied to one another, the better position you'll be. Does that help? Sure. Okay, cool. Any other questions, thoughts? Yes, sir. Talking about sponsorships again, I mean, you then suggested that you like tie, like, I think of like Maryland's Coastal College now with that banner you have there. It's just an example. Would you then tie that into something like you want to sponsor, if there's a sponsor on there, you want to represent maybe the one sign, obviously. I mean, you don't want to put like Maryland's College Coastal mm -hmm. Town up there and then have it relate to something that might be more important. Like that spot. No, absolutely. Um, right, appropriateness in the sponsorship is one, and then other, the freedom, and the freedom to make a community brand fly is one of the things that's essential. The city has been a remarkable steward of this process. As we move to launch, this becomes less about the organization of the city and more about the place that is Salisbury. So we want Salisbury University to have the utmost confidence that they could adopt this idea of Maryland's coastal college town and they can take it and run with it. They can make it mean what it needs to mean for them to be able to, you know, from an institution that in a decade has gone from a pulse test to 9,000 applicants for a thousand some odd spots. You know, the more marketing they do, the greater caliber student they will have and the greater their institutional space will be. So, you know, it's all kind of connected to one another, but that freedom to take it and run with it is huge. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering about um, how do the graphics become available publicly, like if someone wants to see graphic t-shirts, and, and how much uh, creative, like how different from the base package could Right. 
So, um, first of all, you asked a couple questions. Let me see if I can hit them in order. How will they be available? Everything, once the package is finalized, a style guide gets created and clustered with it, as well as every single logo we create will be broken down and saved into five different file formats, and all of them will live in the cloud and can be accessed through a single web link. Now, as we launch, obviously, the city and the steering committee that was formed are going to serve as the brand stewards. But that doesn't necessarily mean that every single application to use it, every single person that says, I want it, is going to have to go through a formal review process. I, I have to tell you, I've done this a lot. Um, I've seen some weird stuff. Not a whole lot of weird stuff, but Richmond, Virginia has a brand RVA, and there's a nail salon that decided to take their logo and create RVA nails. That's odd. Do Would I prefer that happen? No, not exactly. Does it hurt the brand? No, it really doesn't. It's a community. Now, people for some reason are always convinced that somebody is going to take a logo and make a strip club out of it. It's never happened to me yet. I did have a gynecologist office take the logo and adapt it for theirs. That's the closest I have gotten. But um, honestly, being a, we have found that, that for the most part, the, the willingness of the community to take it and use it in the right way is really there. Any mistakes, any deviation from the standard form is something that we give creative license to, but at the same time, most of the deviation comes by mistake. Comes by somebody who doesn't know exactly what they're doing and they take a JPEG and stretch it way the heck out when they don't need to be. You know, so it's actually, and I mean, I've got enough case studies there to, to work off of to know it's actually remarkably smooth. A lot of people ask me about trademarks. Should we trademark? Well, guess what? If you walk down the road of trademarking, sure, you can trademark it all day long. But let's talk about trademark infringement on a community name. I've had one situation in my entire career, and it's when I worked for Hollister, California. And the community was sued by the Abercrombie & Fitch Company because they made shirts that said Hollister, California. And Abercrombie owned the trademark for, uh, for Hollister, California on apparel. So it was like the opposite. That doesn't happen. Luckily, nobody owns the trademark Salisbury, Maryland. It would be very, very difficult for you to prove financial damage or financial harm. Um, it's not like Snow Hill is going to decide to change their name to Salisbury so they can undercut and adopt your brand. You know, so um, there's not a whole lot there with trademark. There's a little bit, and, and you know, communities have done it, but um, just simply having a nice, a nicely word, angry lawyer letter saying, hey, we saw how you use this. We don't really like it. We'd like for you to fix it, has seemed to solve any of those those problems. Can I just make a suggestion? Absolutely. Yeah. This, there's, my, my thoughts on this, and you tell me if this is just absolutely wacko, but the way I was thinking about handling it was uh, as we evolve our website, but even immediately, once everything's ready, mm -hmm. um, have a, a page that has everything downloadable mm -hmm. from our website and just simply make it available yep. to whoever wants to use it, whenever. Yep. And and have the style guide available, mm -hmm. have the fonts downloadable, have everything right there, but have the style guide available so that Absolutely. You know, somebody could see, you know, the, the recommendations for how to use it, you know, what not to do. Things One like of the things that I think that's a great idea, I would, um, I would definitely advise that instead of it being a top level page, that there's a page you have to go through first simply to give your name and email so that the email then drops into a database of all of the people that have been interested and downloaded. So anytime you go through and add new elements, you can send a blanket email out to those folks and say, hey, we've done our brand update for 2017. <coughs> Some additional materials are in the package. We invite you to come back and get anything you need. And then that way it creates kind of a nice dialogue. Um, I, I agree. I don't think you have to be, so what's your social security number? It's just, hey, you know, you want this? 
let us know. Uh, another thing that I've had uh, public sector, I mean private sector do in the past is if a business wants to take it and use it and make merchandise with it, we simply ask, give us a rough estimate at the end of the year of roughly how much you sold. I had a coffee shop that sold $2,400 in coffee mugs in one year. So when you start to get a couple different businesses that are making money off of this brand, and then all of a sudden it's like, look, the city invested in this. We got this, 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 and this. We saw $22,000 in cooperative marketing leverage because businesses actually included our logo on their ads. And then we saw an additional $40,000 go to local business off of merchandise that they sold with the brand. And you know that becomes a pretty compelling argument for the investment. Right, right, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So one of the comments that was made quite a lot was the relaxed nature of the community, especially in comparison to some of the other areas. We talked to, to people about the beach traffic versus what it's like here, the differences in pace, but then also just kind of the, the geography of things. There's air here. There's a little space here. There's room to breathe. So this concept of, of comfortable, I mean, in addition to alliteration that everybody loves, right? You know, um, it just, it felt like something that, that people could connect with. And, and I mean, I heard, I actually heard that word repeated quite a few times. It was one of the ones that, that popped out in terms of one of the, the, the adjectives that best describe this community. So I think the, the thing that when you cluster the two together, as you look at the word coastal, the only negative that I could actually find outside of inferred um, storm danger, which is kind of is part of it, but um, is the fact that people automatically assume that coastal means congested Coastal also means beach traffic. Coastal means all that stuff. So being able to provide this access and this interesting place, but then also an interesting pace. So that's that's what kind of landed us there. Yes, sir. I'll tell you one thing. The connotation I got was we think about the storms we just had. We think about sea level rise. This is a place where those things aren't. So, so there is a there's a safety aspect to it right. as well. Right. Right. Yeah, and I definitely, I mean, I heard it loud and clear. I know in the talk about the university, it was made very clear that Ocean City is a benefit when making that, that pitch. But at the same time, there was also a, a certain disconnection from it, where it's like, we know it's there. We don't necessarily need to go there. Some of us don't even really like to go there. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it is still very much an I'll tell you one of the things that um, has been interesting for me, like whenever I work in a community, one of the things where I kind of put my mind, I've got five kids, um, I've got a, lot, a wife that I really like, she likes me sometimes, <laughs> but like my whole process is what do I need to hear to be able to convince me to consider this place? Because I am... You know, I'm college educated, I'm a business owner, I can live anywhere as long as I have access to an airport and high speed internet. Like those are my restrictions of what I need to live. So um, I have
have been told that I represent the creative class. I think I'm old for the creative class, but anyway. Um, so that's kind of how I put myself in it. And I can tell you, I, I really, it was very, very easy for me to convince myself on Salisbury. And I was telling the mayor, I, I came back down here last weekend and was a instructor at the Merit Badge College over at Salisbury University. And so I spent all day with a, a bunch of obnoxious 12-year-olds, um, which was weird because the scouts were supposed to be nicer than they were. But it's an all, <laughs> all day for them, I think. Um, but I, I told the mayor, as I pulled in and as I drove around the community, I just felt so unbelievable. And, and I hate to use this word. I felt very comfortable. Like, I felt very at home. I didn't feel like I was in a different place. I didn't feel like I was in a an uncomfortable, unfamiliar place. I felt like a place where I could chill. And I, I travel a lot and I do not achieve that with places very often. I get to know them very well, but I don't achieve that comfort. So, you know, I'm very excited personally about that because you, the role that you play to me is it's almost like Salisbury just extended my world a little bit. As downtown Salisbury continues to improve, that's yay for me. I'm less than an hour from here. Like this, this truly becomes part of my life. And uh, so I wanted to, I feel like I was, I was maybe even a little harder on myself because I really wanted everything to help advance all of your hard work. You guys have done some amazing things and sadly the market is slow to realize that. Um, people still operate off of decade old crime stories and decade old educational stats and you know decade old I went to the mall back when blah 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 you know and um, and that's all they need to dismiss an entire community and everything it has to offer so being able to reintroduce yourself to Delmarva is something that is extremely important. Other thoughts? I brought this up at the last meeting we were at before was the fact that it's adaptable. If, if we, we use, and you hear business friendly all the time. Mm -hmm. So if Salisbury can start saying we're business comfortable, mm -hmm. I think that jumps out at people that this is different. You know? Right. So, so I think it's very adaptable. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we even talked about to launch the whole business comfortable campaign, we're going to start doing Pants Free Friday. Okay. Which will be perfect on third Friday to make that even bigger party, right? So. <laughs> All right, y'all. We kept you just a, a little over an hour. Um, once again, I want to thank you all for all of your participation in the process. I want to thank you for all that you gave. Like I say, I, I've seen your faces at numerous meetings. Um, you all are the ones who are, make this community what it is. And um, these tools and, and these resources hopefully are going to be able to be very productive in helping your community realize its vision and, and its future at a pace that, that is good and right for you. Um, it, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm shocked every day at the role that systems like this can play. People sit there and they look at it and they think, oh, it's just, just a bunch of pictures, just a bunch of logos. This is, a lot of people don't think cities should be doing this kind of work. I, and I can turn and I can name city after city after city that they've seen their sales tax revenues increase, they've seen their, um, their hospitality tax revenues increase, they've seen their, their resident satisfaction ratings go through the roof, their uh, volunteer hours, their volunteer financial commitments, like all these elements of community connectivity become directly connected to the message. And so, uh, thank you all for the opportunity and the privilege to come in and work with your community. And I, I really look forward to, to playing this small role in the future of Salisbury, Maryland. So, thank you so much. Before he goes, I just want to say, that it feels like Christmas morning, and it, it feels like we have a bunch of new gifts we all get to play with now. <laughs> so thank you, and the, the cool thing is we all get to play with them now. Yep. So um, Ben, thank you.
uh, you know, you and your wife are more than welcome to move to Salisbury. <laughs> we'll have you. But even if you just want to keep visiting, Absolutely. Yeah, this is the comfortable side coast. We'll come on down. So Got it. Man, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you all so much. Have a safe night. Thank you.